welcome to another edition of the Fuji Guys. And my name is Jerry, and today I'm going to go through the latest uh, in the bridge-style zoom cameras of the uh, the S9900 W or the S9800 W. So depending on what market you're in, uh, it'll apply to both cameras, except for the Wi-Fi feature. So the S9900 W has a Wi-Fi feature, and the S9800 does not have the Wi-Fi feature. So please sit and enjoy. So with our S-series uh, bridge-style cameras, the one of the big advantages is having the 50 times zoom. So uh, as you can see here, I've got the zoom uh, extended here all the way out. So it gives you um, up to like 1,200 millimeter, which is a huge advantage with the 50 time and the um, two time digital zoom. So you have two zoom switches. You have the one on the outside here, just around the shutter release. And then of course you do have the one on the side of the camera here as well. Now, on top of the 50 time optical, as I'm alluding to uh, with the 100 time zoom, is that there's also a two time digital. So to activate that, you just gotta go into the menu and go into the setup of the menu, and you'll see here the digital zoom, and this is off right now, so I'm just gonna turn that on. And now what that allows me to do now is in the auto modes, so whether you're in the P mode or the uh, little red camera mode, uh, or any of the other manual modes, you'll have access to the digital zoom. You don't have access in SR Auto. There's many reasons for that. The camera needs those extra pixels to be able to uh, do things like determine the scene. So um, for the zoom itself, for the digital zoom, you got to be in either the auto mode, the P mode, or any of the manual modes there. And then when you go and use the zoom, you'll see uh, the bar here shows you your optical and your digital. So the black bar here is your optical and anything beyond that is digital. So now I'm into the digital zoom and you can see the 100 times zoom come up right there. So that gives you access to the to the zoom, um, optical and digital zooms up to 100 times. Now with a big lens like this too, a lot of uh, a lot of the things that we want to be able to shoot are things like macro, and this camera has amazing macro capabilities. So I'm just going to grab one of our, uh, uh, a little example here, our little statue here. Anukshuk, I believe is the right term for it, and I'm just going to show you some macro capabilities of this, uh, of this camera. So if I'm just in regular mode, I can get Eh, fairly close. So I'm going to actually have to back up. So there you could see I'm hitting about that distance there. Now if I go into macro mode and regular macro mode at wide angle, I can practically touch the subject and I'm able to still get a nice focused shot. So I get a nice macro shot, nice close. And if I go into super macro, I can actually touch glass. So I'm actually touching the subject and it focuses for me. So it gives me a nice, nice, real shallow um, uh, and a nice, you know, uh, close up macro mode. Now, if you're using regular macro, then you, uh, you can actually use the zoom and get a little further away. So I'm just going to use this particular prop here. So now I can get nice and close up to a certain extent, depending on the zoom range that you're working with and you're able to get a nice close-up shot. So with the uh, S98 and 9900s, uh, we have some new features with the advanced um, shooting modes. So I'm just gonna go through the dials real quick as far as the advanced shooting goes. Um, so you have the advanced mode dial right there. I'm just gonna bring my zoom back in a little bit here. And right away, you'll see that we're actually in the toy mode. Um, and if you hit the menu button, um, and you go back to the first page, so I'm just going to whoops, go right back to the top here. And we're going to go to the advanced modes. And we go to the right and it gives us all of our different options. Uh, in the basic advanced filters, we have things like the Pro Low Light, HDR shooting, natural uh, shooting with flash and without flash. Um, and also uh, the zoom bracketing. So it's going to take three shots and it's going to recrop for you to get a, a closer image. But in the uh, more advanced filters, this is where we get a little creative. So we have the toy camera. We also have the miniature mode. So that's when you're shooting a landscape and you want to make it look like a diorama. We have pop color. So it's a really poppy, uh, high um, saturated color. High key, it's an oversaturation, or sorry, an overexposure uh, that gives kind of a, a fashion look to it, if you will. 
a low key, so it gives it a little bit of the opposite, a dynamic tone. You can do a fisheye, which gives it like an ultra wide angle look, um, a soft focus for portraits, a cross screen for night shots with where you're gonna get stars in your images. And then you have things like a sketch mode, a partial color, red, blue, orange, uh, green, yellow, and um, purple. And what those colors basically is, it's black and white, and then whatever's orange or whatever's blue in the shot will show up depending on which color you choose. So there's a new mode that we've added, it's the sketch mode. So I'm just gonna show you how this one works. So you choose the sketch mode, and you can see right away um, that the image, it's hard to, for me to angle this right. So let me bring a subject in a little bit more here. Now you can actually see um, how it kind of looks like as if I've sketched out this car. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, I'm going to focus my shot, and I'm going to take a picture. So it basically creates the image like it's a sketch. So that's one of the uh, creative filters that you can uh, shoot with when you're shooting with uh, the uh, S-series cameras. So um, as always, we've always got some new features that we add to, the, to our cameras and the newest is an intervalometer. So this allows you to shoot interval shooting or if you will, uh, it gives you the opportunity to do time lapse type photography. And it's really easy to get to on this camera. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the camera into P mode just to make it easy. And down at the bottom we have our self timer button. So I'm going to hit the self timer and you're going to get your options here. So we hit the self timer. one for the two second and now we've got the interval shooting. So once you do that, now it's going to bring up the menu to do your setup. So you can shoot up to um, every six, 15 seconds and uh, up to every 10 minutes. So choose that. Um, oh, and let me just try that again. Let's bring that up again. I didn't mean to go that fast. So there's our interval shooting. So 10 minutes and if I hit to the right, now I can choose the duration. So up to six hours at a time. So I can shoot one picture every 10 minutes for six hours. If I wanted to do it, I could also do it every 15 seconds up to six hours. So this would create a tremendous uh, image. So just for fun, I'm going to set this up now so we can do a little bit of a time lapse. I'm not going to run it too, too long, but let it take a couple of shots. So uh, and just while I'm talking. So it'll take a picture, as you can see, and then the screen goes black. And that's to conserve your battery power so that the long durations, the camera's not gonna um, take too much time in, in uh, or too much battery power during that time. So now we've taken two pictures. It's taking one every 15 seconds. I just wanna wait for a third picture to show. And maybe I'll just move the car and let it take the next picture. There we go, and it's taken the next picture. And then I can move one more. Uh, subject and it's going to take one more picture because I want to show you how it's going to show on the back of the screen itself. And there's the fourth picture. So I'm just going to stop the operation now. And so now we've been in the interval shooting so it's going to shoot one more shot. So now I've cancelled it. There we go. There, we've cancelled it. Now I go into playback and what it's going to show you is the last frame you shot, and then in the bottom, it's going to show you the actual time-lapse video of all the pictures. So it'll actually go through all the pictures that are in that time-lapse sequence to give you an idea of what your time-lapse will look like at the end of the day when you go and edit it and, and put it through uh, whatever software you need to to get it uh, to, as a video itself. So that's how you do time-lapse photography with this camera. So one of the uh, uses for a bridge camera is being able to shoot things like action, sports, um, nature, things of that nature. And these are all subjects that are very hard to predict. So we need to use some high speed shooting. So we're going to go through the high speed shootings of the camera. Um, so on the top of the camera here, we have our drive button. And we just hit the drive button and it's going to give you a whole bunch of different options in continuous. Uh, the first one is best frame capture. And what this allows you to do is shoot up to 10 frames per second, um, up to 10 or 20 frames. And here we can see that there's a setup option. So we're going to go into the setup and this will show us how many, how fast we're going to shoot. So we can shoot uh, a low frame rate, so a higher quality image, or we can shoot up to 10 frames per second. 
and we can shoot how many frames? We could shoot 10 or 20 frames. I'm just for the um, for the example, I'm just going to shoot in 20 frames, and it does reduce your image size. It shows you right here that it's going to go to a smaller image size. If I want full res, I stick to 10 frames. So um, now I've got the 10 frames. Now hitting left and right will now determine how many frames I'm going to save after I've released the shutter and before I've released the shutter. And I'll show you kind of why that is. So here we've got 11 and 8. So I have 11 before and 8 after I've released the shutter. So what happens is if, as I focus the camera and press the shutter halfway, you're going to hear these frame rate, these firing, the, the, the images firing. So what this is doing is that it's actually priming those images but not saving them. So if I was to go back into playback, none of those pictures would show up. Now, what al this allows me to do is if I press and hold, and I hear the clicking, and then I see what I want to shoot, by the time I, I shot it, it's gone. But because I've primed it, now the first 10 shots are going to save, and then the eight after are, gonna sh uh, after are going to save, I'll make sure that I don't miss that moment. So when your daughter is scoring that goal, you can you know, set it up so as she's on her breakaway, you're pressing that shutter button, and right as she kicks the ball, you release the shot. You'll get the 10 pictures before she kicked the ball, and the eight pictures after she kicks the ball. So you get the kick and the goal all in, the, all in, those, in that sequence. So that's what that uh, best frame capture allows you to do. Um, and going back in there into the, um, into the continuous shooting, we have you know, different continuous speeds and um, image quality. So L for larger image quality, medium, and then M for, uh, or H for high speed and super high. And then this is where we get up to 60 frames per second. But at 60 frames per second, your image quality is only at 640 by 480. So it's a very, very low resolution. But in one second, you get 60 shots. So uh, you're certainly not going to miss any moments with that. So of course, this camera comes equipped with HD video. Um, so Basically, it's a one-touch video system. It's right here, that big red button right there. You just press that and your video will begin recording. Um, so right now I have it in full HD, 1080p, uh, and you do have some choices. So that's how you start and stop your video. I'm just going to go into the menu here and just show you the different menu, uh, the different movie recordings. So there's the movie mode. Go to the right here and this gives you up to 60, 30 frames per second depending on which resolution you want. Um, so you get 60 frames per second at 1080. Um, and you can get up to 400, 480 frames per second, but at a very low resolution. Now, you can also take pictures during your video recording. And all you have to do is hit the shutter release. So as I'm doing a video, I can zoom in and just take my picture as I need to take it. And it just blinks, as you can see. So it's going to keep a very nice high resolution image um, during your video. Now, of course, as you can see, we also had access to the zoom. And you have access to both either zoom lever, uh, the one on the uh, side of the camera or on the, on the front. But the one on the side gives us a little bit of uh, adjustment. You can actually adjust the speed of the zoom lever itself. So we're just going to go into the, into the menus again. And we're going to go over into the setup, and we're going to see here the zoom lever type. And we're just going to go here, and H is for high, middle, and low. And there's also an auto back, so it's going to zoom back automatically for you. In the low, what it does is it actually slows down the zoom itself. So when you're doing video, you don't want it to be so jarring. You want kind of a creeping zoom. Uh, that's where this little feature comes into play. So uh, the video is very uh, you know, simple and easy to use. Um, quick one touch for everything, whether it's one touch for a picture during your video, one touch to start the video, and uh, one touch to actually bring the zoom uh, back as well. So there's different features in that respect. So a new feature added to this camera um, on the S9900W camera. So this is only applicable to that camera. If you have the S9800, unfortunately, uh, it will not have a Wi-Fi feature built into it. Um, so this allows us to, of course, control the camera. Um, some markets will have the 9800 only. Some will have both. Some will have 9900W only. 
so first and foremost, you want to um, be able to connect the camera to, uh, to your iOS device. So the first thing you want to do is you go into your menu and you'll see in the setup options of the menu the wireless settings. So you hit to the right and this gives you the general settings and so on. So this gives you different options. One option here is to resize the image before the smart, to the smartphone. So this gives you a more manageable size when you're talking about shooting um, uh, or transferring your videos to your phone. So you can actually turn that off and have a full resolution image as well. The other, um, of course, now we want to actually set it up. So that's in the actual, in the actual, uh, dual, it went too far. There it is, wireless communication. So you hit to the right, and this screen comes up. And then with your iOS device, you've got to go into your settings and go under Wi-Fi, and you'll see the camera show up here. So there's the camera there. Once you see the check mark come up like that, then you go into the actual application which is the Fujifilm camera remote. So now here you have options you hit the camera remote option and now the screen turns off and now we've got complete blank and you get total control now on the smartphone itself. So uh, you don't have manual control on the camera but you do have zoom control. You can go to video and do videos. So now it's recording a video, so it shows you how much time is on your video. If you go back over to picture mode, it'll take pictures. If you have your flash up now, you have access to your flash modes. So you can actually have auto or forced flash, so it's going to flash uh, all the time or only when, uh, when it needs it. And it's got access to your self-timer as well. Um, and to any of the images that are actually on the memory card. So you hit the playback button, now it shows you everything that's on the memory card itself. So now if I want to pick up to 30 pictures to download, I just have to tap them and then hit import and it will import all of the pictures that I've selected. I can also zoom in on the picture and if I select a picture I want to zoom in on, I just pinch and zoom and then I can import the picture that I've actually magnified. So that gives you a little more flexibility um, when you're uh, traveling, things of that nature. And it gives you also a battery indicator there to tell you how much battery power is left on your camera. So this is great for you know, tripod shooting, even um, inclement weather when you want to kind of keep warm and, and leave the camera outside and do its thing. Um, of course, it's not a weather sealed camera, so we don't want to necessarily leave it outside uh, in, the, uh, in wet, but in the cold, it, it should be okay. Um, and this gives you a little more flexibility on the control of the camera itself. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you certainly got all your questions answered. If not, feel free to post them in the comments below. And certainly you can uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we also encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Fuji Dice.